Hey everyone. So in uh, 1970, Honda unveiled the three-wheeler. It was at Pismo Beach, Florida in the back of an SUV. It was covered up and the unveiling uh, was actually performed there on the beach and they actually unloaded it, uncovered it, and set it on the sand for the first time. You could order these uh, in different colors, green, red, blue, uh, yellow. The Honda Red wasn't uh, solid at the time and so you know color availability of choice was, was an option for you. Uh, for about 16 years, Honda continued to make the three-wheeler um, until, you know, due to accidents and public pressure and litigation, uh, Honda was, not Honda, but all manufacturers were instructed to uh, basically, uh, no, sales are no longer allowed in the U.S. And in fact, dealers were actually ordered to uh, scrap their existing last year inventory in 1986. And... Uh, the, the three-wheelers just reigned king for 16 years uh, before the uh, four-wheelers. In fact, uh, 1970 was the start of the uh, UTV uh, revolution, if you will. Uh, the early model, 1970 first model, was referred to as the US-90, of which uh, this is. And um, the ATC acronym had not really been adopted till later, till about 1974, but it was referred to as the all-terrain cycle. Uh, Honda had a good run, they had uh, made pretty much every make and model uh, in different varying levels of performance, and over the years they refined their ability to um, uh, perform, if you will, by adding suspension and changing ignition systems from points and to, to CDI and so on. Um, a couple of models, the 110, the 200 line, 200X series, 350X, all the way up to um, the uh, big main machine, which I uh, won't call it as the king of the hill because the 350X actually uh, maintained uh, that right. But the uh, 250R was definitely the racing king and it's still considered today to be probably the culmination of all three-wheeler technology. Uh, from uh, 1986 being the most sought after year. And um, I managed to, to stumble into one of the uh, US 90s, uh, which was the first model. And uh, it's a K0 motor with a K1 uh, engine, which means it was probably a crossover year, probably like a late 1970, uh, uh, um, possibly. So long story short, uh, here's our first attempt to get this thing going and uh, actually see whether or not it will run. I suspect that it will. It's been sitting in storage for 10 plus years. Uh, my best guess is about 15 years in storage and obviously wasn't too abused prior to that because of the tires and the condition that they're in. I uh, hope this is helpful to you guys. Enjoy. Thanks. 1970 ish US 90 with a K0 motor and a K1 frame serial number. Um, it's all original. We stole it from a dealer here locally. Um, it's been stored in a barn for the last 10 years. We cleaned the tank, cleaned the carb. Uh, we haven't turned the fuel onto the carb yet, so we're going to do that right now and see what kind of leaks we get, if any. Hopefully, it fills up. Everything works like it should. I don't even know if we have spark or not. This thing is almost 50 years old, or is 50 years old. And so far, so good. I'm not seeing anything bad. I didn't hook up the air filter yet because I just figured not necessary, but you know what? Let's get it out of the way. Let's hook it up. Just, just because for now. Right. Air filters on, choke halfway, ignition switch on. I don't even know if we'll have spark. I have not checked the point system. Looks like maybe somebody was in there years ago. And uh, I'm hoping that it at least will fire and do something, make some noise. Original tires, a new set of these is $10,000 if you can find a new set. The um, used ones are about four, anywhere between four and $1,200, $1,500 each depending on the condition on eBay. 
each. So all original. Gotta love it. Let's pull this thing through and see what we think. Check, make sure we have oil when we do. spark. I would have to double check. Let's make sure. Oh. Well, not even a hit. I would say probably because it doesn't have spark. It's good compression though for a 90. Nothing going. Okay. Well, we're going to check for spark, come back, and try again. Cool. At this point, I'm getting a little worried. Gas just not one. sure what to expect. See? Gas leak is just from the overflow. And I'm really not sure if we have spark or not. So I pull the spark plug out, double check all the connections, and I have very strong spark. After repeated attempts, it still continued to fail. Even though I had good sparks, so I thought maybe it was a timing issue. Well, it wasn't. I managed to prime the spark plug by dipping it in some gasoline. And lo and behold, unexpectedly, it fired up. And I missed recording the actual starting for the first time. But here's the recording for the second pull. I quickly shut it down and moved on and uh, filmed the second instance. What I didn't know at this point was when I put the tank on, I had not routed the throttle cable properly. And so there was a little tension in the throttle cable that was actually causing the uh, machine to idle uh, rather quickly, uh, faster than I would have liked. I thought maybe I had a carburetor problem, and so I was just going to let it run and warm up and then see what kind of adjustments I could do on it. But I just uh, decided to let it idle here for a few minutes, and then I found uh, my throttle cable, cable problem.
better. Still not going to be perfect. Uh, you know what, before we do that, So what I had accidentally done was turn the, the uh, throttle cable down actually between the two fuel lines, the reserve line and the main line. So I just had to reroute them. And then I put a little bit of lube on the slide. The slide was a little sticky, so I just wanted to make sure that the uh, slide was uh, working well. From here on out, everything just got better. Just some simple fine tuning, carburetor started to loosen up, the machine got warm, things really started to run nicely. cleaned up or get a new carb, one of the two, but either way, there you have it, 50 years old, the first of the uh, three-wheelers that started the revolution, the revolution, signing out. better every time I start it. At this point, getting a new carb is just out of the question. The Japanese key and carbs that these came with are extremely rare and very difficult to find. And last thing I want to do is slap a piece of uh, Chinese junk on from eBay. We'll just keep it as it is and keep it stock. Now it's just time to go run it around the backyard, which I uh, did carefully um, by pushing it out to the grass so that I wouldn't take any uh, rubber off the uh, trap. He's running like a champ.
At this point, I couldn't be any happier than my dog. It's not every day you get to work on a piece of history. It's incredible that these machines actually are still around and still run. This truly was a piece of history, something that changed the world and our entire view of what we do in the outdoors and how we recreate. What an awesome machine. I was glad that I was able to get my hands on it and bring it back to life. This will be a great addition to my three-wheeler collection, and I intend to put it in storage for a long time. Thanks for watching.